Hey guys, welcome to this next video. This is uh, the part two of uh, setting up our abstract database. So let's begin and jump in and we'll continue where we left off. So we just left off adding this extra functionality that went off the ID of all the assets inside the database. Now we're gonna go into actually what will happen when we add or remove an object from this database? Because right now we're just calling the list below. But depending on the object type we have here, we may want to uh, do something different with it when we actually add it. This is mostly going to be usable inside the editor because the way we save certain types will differ and we'll have to kind of adjust how we do it. So down here, actually, let's just do it up on top, right below the protected property, we're going to be adding two abstract methods. And I'm going to do protected since I don't want anything else outside of this database to call these. I'll call on add object of type T. And you don't need these curly brackets, you just need to do a semicolon. And do the same again, object void on remove object and T. And since these are abstract methods, we need to put make the class abstract itself, or else we'll get that error there. Now we want to add these where they need to be called. So in the add, we'll just go on add object, on remove object, and this one we may want to do a little bit differently. Instead of just calling the remove at, we could do our object equals get at index index. And we can do, actually, we can just go straight up, clear this, remove this get at index. We'll get the object at the index and then toss it to the remove. And this will do this. Well, actually, there may be some cases where this might not actually work correctly. So I'm going to do var object equals just to be safe. I may not even, I may be overthinking this, but uh, just in case, I'm going to do it a little bit longer way. And on replace is going to be a tad bit different to where I want bar old object equals objects dash index. And this way we can go on remove object, old object, on add object, object. Because we're removing one object when we're replacing it. So we need to handle that as well. And that is all the areas where we're adding and removing objects where those will actually be called. Uh, later on in this video, we'll see where these are actually get used and we'll implement them. But next step is creating an instance of this database. How do we do that? Well, since it's a scriptable object, we have to use uh, some other methods of creating it. And since we're actually saving this to our project, we're going to have to use the asset database to save some of this. And also, since we're going to have a lot of these, and they're going to be a tad bit different each time, I'm going to be making a static method down here for handling this. And this is just going to be a generic static method. So we'll return type of u, and it'll be get database type of u. And this will have two parameters, string. I'm going to call this one, uh, let's do path and string name. And we're going to make sure u is type scriptable object. Now we can use this with any other databases. And now I'm going to be doing 
first off, let's create a full path string, which this is the path from the assets folder. So we're going to go assets forward slash for the assets folder. We're going to add the path from the assets folder. And we're going to add the name of the file. We're going to make a type u database equals asset database. And for this to be usable, we need to go up and add a namespace using Unity Editor dot load asset at path. We're going to do the full path. And since this is a ger can have a generic override, we'll just do u. And we'll load the type of this database at the full path. And we'll check if the database is null. We're going to actually create a instance of this class. So we're going to be using system io dot directory dot create directory application dot data path plus db path. No, nope. or just path. Yeah. So this will create get the full path all the way to the asset file, I believe. And then we'll add our path that we want our file to be in. So continue with that. And this will if the directory is already there, it won't do anything, but if it it's missing, it'll automatically set it up for us. Down here we'll do database equals scriptable object dot create instance of type U. And then we'll go asset database dot create asset. This is actually adding the asset to our project file. This line is just adding it in data in our script. It'll just make an instance. This is actually creating the asset file. So right here we just go database dot full path asset database dot save assets since we create it, now we have to save our changes. And asset database refresh. Oops. Since we added an asset to our database, we're going to refresh our um, editor so that it's actually visible in the editor. Then finally, we're going to return database. Now, before we leave this file, there's one other thing we have to think of. This only works when the Unity Editor namespace is available. So if we make our build, none of this will work at all. So we need to handle getting it when we actually have to build differently than we do when we have it in the editor. So we're not actually going to be creating instances of this database when we have it in build mode, since we should already have the database built and set up in the editor only. So to make sure that this runs only in the editor, we're going to do some pound if signs. And we'll just do namespace unity editor. So if the unity editor defined is true, is defined, it will run this. Then we'll do a hash else and hash end if. So Anything in here is going to be only run in the Unity Editor. Anything in here will be run when we actually build, and that found defined is not actually defined anymore. So in this else, actually, just so I still have highlighting, I'm going to change that to not. I'll, I'll change that back in a bit. But for now, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to go our database equals I should do a new bar. Now I'm just going to go U. U database. 
equals resources dot load u and this there's two different things right here so we're going to be doing uh, let's see we're going to do path dot replace and this path right here our databases are going to have to be stored in the resources folder so we can reload them here so we're going to have resources in this folder here or in this path name here our, since we have that there we're going to come in here and go resources slash so we're going to replace this instance in our path with nothing we're just going to remove it and then we're going to be adding our our name and in here in our name up here we're actually going to be having the asset type at the end which is dot asset but we don't need that for the load we just need the name so we're going to do the same with the asset at the end the extension type and we're going to just replace it with nothing as well so this will give us our string of where we want to load our asset from and here we're going to do if database equals null I'm just going to debug some actually we'll just return null you won't really see the debug much actually we'll add it it'll go into the logs so else we'll return the database so we'll just go debug dot log warning and we'll go no database found of type type of u dot to string or actually is there a name on here dot name yeah there we go that'll be a bit a little easier to read so if null we'll just return null if it doesn't exist and if there is we'll return database so cool and I'm gonna switch this back to if just unity editor so if editor it'll run this if we're actually in a build it will run this simple enough that way we won't have errors when we run so that is all there is for the actual abstract database section of it now we can actually go create a uh, some implementations of this so jump back into unity I'm going to create a new folder we call this base database and go C sharp and go base database and another one and this will be base database asset cool now we'll open both of these up So have these both here. The base database asset is not going to implement mono behavior, but it has to have the database asset interface, which we'll implement. And clear all these out just to make it look nicer. There we go. And also over here in the base data, actually, we'll just implement these real quick. Um, I'm going to be using private values for these. So to make sure they save correctly, we need a sterilized field, private int ID, and sterilized field, private string name. And set up the getters and setters. that I'm also going to be setting up uh, a couple of constructors mm -hmm. 
there's going to be a constructor that just takes the ID and a constructor that just takes or takes the ID and name as well. Okay. And one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just come up here just to double be safe and do system sterilizable. So Unity knows this class can be sterilized and just make sure that it's saved correctly and all that. So now over in our base database, we're going to be implementing the abstract database uh, of type base database asset. So we'll get an error saying that we don't have or we have abstract members not defined. So we'll implement these. And again, we have some editor code that will be, let's see, let's double check. Yep. So we have some editor code that we only want to run during Unity Editor. So we'll use our tags again. This time we'll just use an indif. And in here, we're going to use Unity Editor dot editor utility dot set dirty and we'll pass this so set dirty is telling unity that this database had something changed so next time unity does a auto save or the user clicks save unity will sterilize all those changes to a file and save it make sure it's all good we're going to be doing that for both remove and add object just to make sure this is saved Otherwise, this method is not going to do much, since it's mostly for editor only. Hmm. OK, that is actually all for our base database. Um, oh yeah, a couple of things that I forgot to do, going with our trying to keep things clean. I'm going to add all these scripts into a namespace. I'll just call this RPG Systems Utility. And actually, let's toss it into a database namespace just so it's all, just so if we add anything else. Oops. I added it instead. And then are getting errors because it's not in the right namespace so we'll add it to the namespace cool okay there now that's all clean let's jump back into unity and i'm going to make one more database I'm create a folder and i'm going to just call this s o database short for scriptable object database. If that's confusing, then it might be a little confusing since this is a scriptable object that we're using for a database that is holding other scriptable objects. Oops, that needs to be scriptable object database. There we go. Open both of these up. Okay, now these are going to be pretty much identical to the, uh, these namespaces. So I'm just going to copy first off the na namespaces. And then they're identical to implementation. So I'm going to be copying the base database abstract over into the database, SO database. And oops, I need to rename this to asset. There we go. And in our SO database, change it from base database asset to SO database asset. There we go. And another one, go over to the base database asset and copy its implementation since this is going to be identical and add it to the base asset. Now, one difference 
this is a scriptable object. So the base class is scriptable object. The base database asset doesn't have a base class. It is the base class. That's the main difference. Update the constructors. Now, why would we want a database of scriptable objects? Well, it'll be an issue that we would run into later while we're implementing. But Unity does not sterilize um, inherited classes well in like a list. So if I have a list of a base class and taught a lot of classes that inherit from it into that list, it wouldn't save correctly. So to kid around that little bug, I, I've been using a database that has scriptable objects. So each one of these assets added is its own scriptable object that will save into our project. But normally if you do that, you'd be creating each file for every of those and they'll all be overflowing your project soon because you'll have tons of them. An easy way to get around that is in this database, well, the reason I made this on add and on remove is we're going to actually be adding those scriptable objects to the database's asset file. So they all go into one asset and they're easy to manage. So the way to do that is use asset database. Let's see, is it asset database? Yes, asset database. Since this is in the Unity Editor namespace, there we go. Dot add object to asset. And we're going to be adding this object that's just been added to this database's asset. Now, since we do that, if we jump back into Unity real quick, just for an example anyway, pretend if this interface folder was the asset that we have. As soon as we add an at another asset to it, like we're doing with the database, it would have to pop down and you'd see all the assets underneath it. Though the actual database file wouldn't be this top one usually. It would be some random asset. There's no way in controlling the order they're actually added. So to do this better, to not actually show them in the editor, we'll go object that hide flags equals hide flags dot hide in hierarchy. This way only the database file is actually shown and all of these are just magically hidden inside the object file. Object file. So that's, an easy, that's one way to get around the inheritance list. So that'll actually come in very handy later. Next step in the remove, since they're actually objects and if we're removing the object, I'm assuming you're deleting it. So easy as that. So we're going to just do destroy immediate uh, the object and we're going to have to pass in true for allow destroying assets because technically it's an asset. <coughs> so yeah, there. That's all you have to do for the scriptable object database. So that'll add it, hide it, the script added object and then destroy it once we remove it. There we go. And jump back in the Unity to make sure there's no errors. Cool. So we have our abstract database, which is just our base class. Then we have our scriptable object database, which is the database of scriptable objects. And our base database, which is just a database of any object that doesn't need uh, inheritance. So everything that's the same class for the most part. It's a little bit lighter than our scriptable object, so it's a little bit neater. Uh, anyway, that's all we have to do for our database uh, utilities here. In the next video, we'll jump in, go into our stat system, and extend our stat types class into an actual database and make it so that we can create stat types inside the editor without having to opening this script. And it will actually let us have more data than just an enum would. Well, till then, hope this was helpful and hope you guys learned something. See you guys then. Bye.